Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today, Good Old Games surprised everyone by releasing Homeworld Emergence. Now, you've probably never heard of Homeworld Emergence, because it was originally Homeworld Cataclysm. The lost game of the series which never appeared in the remasters because the source code was lost. The war for Higara has left the galaxy in turmoil. The past 15 years have seen the birth of new possibilities and the festering of old grudges. The once dominant Tidan Empire has fractured under the strain of civil war. The new Tidani Republic tries to hold the old territories together while forces loyal to the old Emperor lurk in the new bandit kingdoms, waiting for their chance to strike back. So Cataclysm set 15 years after the original homeworld. While the Tidani struggle between past and future, the Kushan people have established themselves on Higara, building new cities, repairing the damage done by the final battle for their home world. These are graphical glitches on the videos, incidentally. They're not in the rest of the game, just the videos. Even a fragile peace has its politics. The Kith Council has been re-established, and the future of Higara is now debated amongst the gathered Kithsa. Even amongst equals, there are power struggles. The mothership still orbits high above Higara. Pressed into the role of shipyard, she now builds new carriers to the specifications of each individual kith. The need for new ships and the crews to man them is a desperate one. Military and economic pressure on the new Higarans is intense. Resources and technology are at the command of the Council. Kith with little or no political power have been forced to purchase technology from the Bentuzi and other races. Higaran ships of exotic design now seek their fortune amongst the stars. The war for homeworld is over now, but the galaxy remains a dangerous place. So yeah, Homeworld Cataclysm was originally going to be an expansion disc for Homeworld, rather than a standalone game. Coming in on Vector 247. The original Homeworld was of course developed by Relic, but for this expansion, Sierra contracted it to a Barking Dog, who you probably don't know very much about, but they, uh, they did this, they also did at least one iteration of uh, Counter-Strike. And then they were acquired by Rockstar Games, they became Rockstar Vancouver. And somewhere during that purchase, apparently the original source code for Cataclysm was mislaid. It was lost, it was deleted, we don't really know. And this meant that when Gearbox acquired the rights to Homeworld and remastered it into Homeworld 1 and 2, they were unable to do that with Homeworld Cataclysm. The way to play it was using the original discs released back in 2000 and not so compatible these days. This is Somtaw Fleet Command to all ships. Prepare for emergency hyperspace. Set course for the home world. Of course, getting old games running, that's what GOG.com kind of cut its teeth on. That's how it got started. It used to be known as Good Old Games, and I kind of still call it that because GOG sounds a bit silly. So yeah, they have apparently, well, apparently the decision has been made that there is no chance of tracking down the parts and developing the missing part of Homeworld. So they've put together this package and they, they literally surprised everyone by releasing it this morning. I'd never heard that this project was happening. We kind of assumed that if it was going to be released, it would be through GOG.com, but we held on to the hope there might be a remaster. There was always a possibility that the assets could be stripped out of the game and the levels basically recreated, right, without the source code. But I, I guess they decided to go with the re-release route, or the, the repackaging route. And that's what you're looking at here. This is a very old binary and you can get it to work. That uh, This is running using OpenGL version rather than the 3DFX OpenGL. 
It apparently supports an incredibly old version of Direct 3D, which doesn't seem to work correctly, and there's even a software renderer option which works pretty well. However, it does seem the performance is not as great as I would like, given that I've got a pretty high-end NVIDIA graphics card in here. You know, back when this was released, most computers were still below 1 gigahertz CPU clock. Of course, you could still make some pretty good-looking spaceship. These designs still look great today. They really uh, have that 70s sci-fi book cover look. Like, uh, Peter Elson is, of course, the name that was credited by the artist. Originally, he was going to create art for the game, but the publisher changed the, his, their mind. And uh, he merely got some thanks and a character named in his honor in uh, the original homeworld. I actually think the look of the spaceships really stands up pretty well. They they would look good in a you know low poly game these days. Okay, maybe the textures could be upgraded a bit, but I think it I think it looks totally acceptable considering it's a ten dollar game. Now in the original homeworld you had the mothership, and in this one you have a much smaller mining ship. In fact, I think the scale of the game is a whole lot smaller. Tactical officer online. Full power to sensors. Analyzing combat data now. Command, we need to find out where we can do the most good. Well, at least the size of the fleets you're leading are Understood smaller. Tactical. Attention carrier Virak. This is Kit Santa mining vessel Kunlan. We have arrived in sector 112 and request targeting data. Good to have you, Kunlan. We've got a strike fleet needing cover in sector 109. Can you assist? We'll send everything we've got, but be advised, we are a mining vessel. It would be best if we did not have to move directly into the main battle. The strike wing of Firelands frigates are under attack from Titani bombers at this position. Without fighter support, the frigates will be destroyed and that flank will collapse. Send out a squad of Acolyte fighters ASAP to assist the frigates. And finally, I'm actually playing the game. So it is, of course, playing exactly the same way as the original Homeworld. Uh, you'll notice, incidentally, that we're running a 4 to 3 aspect ratio because that's what the original game supports. I haven't tried to get it set up for 16 to 9, but that may be possible. Not really clear that every game engine underway. of that era is able to support modern widescreen aspect ratios. So yeah, I've got the mothership, I've got some workers that are going to go out and start mining asteroids, we've got some recon spacecraft that are going to start looking for bad guys, and I've been told we need Ready. some fighter support. So I've built, I'm starting to build Going these to things, now. right? These are acolyte fighters. <laughs> We're actually told that there are bombers attacking our uh, our frigates or whatever, and we should go and help them, but we need to build some of these fighters first. We get signal! We've picked up a flight of Tidan fighters incoming from the main battle. They're probably investigating our hyperspace signature. Little do they know, we have a fully armed and operational mining vessel here. I mean, okay, so the game, you do start out with a mining vessel, but one of the changes from the original homeworld is that the large ships have modules which, through the game, you can build, you can enhance, you can modify your ship. You start out as this mining vessel and you turn it into something completely different by the end of the story. And yeah, the story, as I said, starts 15 years after the original homeworld. It is not generally considered to be part of the Homeworld canon for the simple reason that Homeworld 2 doesn't make reference to any of the events that happen in this, and there's some serious stuff that goes down. It is, however, an excellent story, and there are many Homeworld fans who will tell you that their favourite is Cataclysm. Of course, I'm interpreting that as a, you know, genuine love. Maybe it's just that they're the gamer equivalent of uh, indie band hipsters who want to have unpopular opinions to set themselves aside from the crowd. As for unpopular opinions, I'm pretty sure that I'm unpopular with those Tidan fighters that my acolytes are now tearing to shreds. Point to high alert now. So yeah, I'm having to defend my workers from the astro- sorry, my workers who are harvesting the asteroids from the Tidan fleet that mostly don't know where I am. 
Meanwhile, I'm trying to get some ships put together to go and help my friends. Finally, the cavalry comes along with a bunch of acolytes. There's my tactical overlay on now, giving me you know, little circles and squares and triangles and stuff around my targets. Actually, there's no circles there. What am I talking about? What I am seeing is nice explosions as I'm blowing all these things up. Roger, command. So each step in the mission has very well set out objectives. They appear in the bottom left corner. That's not necessary. That's not so much the case in the original home world. There's a lot of things that happen, and you're pretty much uh, just playing through the battle without these uh, objectives showing up. Having said that, it's a very small part of a very old UI. The Homeworld Remastered Collection has vastly improved UI. It's had decades, a couple of decades to improve on uh, the original design, and it benefits immensely. We've done it. By taking pressure off Kith Nabal's flank force, we've helped hold the line. Yay, yeah, go us. Our Kith is awesome. Attention, Kunlan. The first Imperialist attack wiped out our sensor grid. We need you to scout enemy positions with your recon ships. We are planning a counterattack. I gotta say that every time I say Kith, it feels like I'm saying Kiss with a, a lisp, which just doesn't scan very well for me. But you know, the game does come with the standard homeworld manual, which is like 150 pages of lore with tons of controls all over the place. There's a lot to learn. And it, it does stand up really well. On the downside, if you try to get this running, there's a good chance that it won't run perfectly after the first install. You're going to be spending a bit of time on the forums trying to figure out how to set it up. I, in the end, had to go into the shortcut that they created and modify the command line options to actually make the thing render properly. It, it would render properly, but it wouldn't render my mouse pointer and it wouldn't render a resolution that was useful. So, so that might turn many potential buyers off. But at least Homeworld Remastered doesn't have any of these uh, issues. We have picked up a convoy of enemy resources with escorts in this area. They must be resupplying the Imperialist attack fleet. Engage and destroy them. I'm only playing the first mission incidentally. The, the whole story is quite expansive. I don't want to drop too many spoilers but it does deal in nanobot infections. An infection, a disease, a pathogen that literally takes over other spacecraft and enslaves them. That's what you're fighting against for much of the game. I'm on my way. Our engineers think there is a way to link our acolytes together to form a Corvette class vessel. They are ready to begin research on the project. If you remember the original homeworld, the uh, science vessels would come in segments and they'd join together to make, make a better and better science ship. In Cataclysm, your fighter ships can actually pair up, they can join to create a more powerful uh, spacecraft. Incidentally, yeah, you get again lots of lore inside the game itself to read if you're into that kind of thing, but of course you're do doing that in real time. So while you're reading, there's bad guys flying around and potentially shooting and, and everything. The manual you can of course enjoy when you're uh, offline. The game does provide different difficulty settings. There's a, a very easy setting if you want to use that and just breeze your way through the game and enjoy the story. Because that is one of the strengths of the, the Homeworld franchise in general. It, it is also a real-time game and I actually have a very hard time keeping my forces organized. I, you're selecting them and trying to assign them to groups and then reassign them to groups. I'm not the best at that, so I tend to just play the games through on the easier levels. <laughs> Mostly because I don't have time. I'm not the best real-time strategy player. I'm quite, uh, I'm better at things like Crusader Kings where I can really think about what I'm doing. Taking down the last of the resource harvesters. Receiving. Attention, get them all. This is the Somtal mining oh, vessel, Kun Lao. The enemy resources have been destroyed. Ready. Now during the mission you can of course send your spacecraft back to base to get repaired. They can get upgraded, they can be scuttled and rebuilt and... Warning! The proximity sensor net is under attack in Sector 110. If the net fails, the Tidan Force can run their entire fleet through the hole. We must defend the net immediately. Okay, let's send another... send whatever we can find out that way. This is always the hard part. Find, I've got 
fighters all Standby over the place three. now. I've got acolytes all over the place. So here we go, squad of... Well, I don't know how many. <laughs> we got a whole bunch of them coming in here. Now, you'll notice these are using the square icons. That's because these are the paired up ships. There's, there's actually 12 here, but they are acting as um, you know, paired up ships. I'm not really clear on the exact bonuses, but let's actually tell these things to split up just so I can show you. Special action, unlink. Ha! You thought you only had six enemy ships, now you have 12. Can your guns track us all? I don't think so. We'd better deal with these lighter fighters first, and then we'll go after the big ones. Oh, yes! Beautiful! Things exploding all over the place, although I think some of those might be my people exploding. Ah, we can build more. It'd be nice if these things would actually publish a, like, average pilot life expectancy. <laughs> be an interesting statistic in these real-time strategy games, right? Because I don't think it would be very long. You are the most badass pilot in the universe. Your life expectancy is two minutes. The upper hand. The Imperials are pulling back. One of their damaged cruisers is in this area. I think we should make sure it's not in this area. Track it down and make sure it never threatens Higara again. Now at this stage of the game, I don't have the ability to salvage uh, hostile ships, I believe. That that comes later and it's gonna it's major mechanic in the homeworld series, of course. That's my ships joining together there. Going all full on Voltron. And this is us finally clearing up the last defenders here. Obviously, I've heavily edited this mission. It maybe took about half hour to play through. You can probably do it a lot faster, but I like to harvest all the asteroids. Normally, you would have a very hard time taking down a ship that size with these little uh, spacecraft. But it has already been heavily damaged by the other spacecraft on your side. So it's just as a case of... You're pummeling it until it goes down. Then victory will be yours. You can actually zoom right in and watch the thing, you know, watch the spacecraft from their point of view. There is actually like a cockpit view option, but it literally just shows you what your spacecraft is seeing. You're not flying this, you're just watching the AI zip around and murderize all the hostile forces. When's it gonna die? Looks like it's leaking space stuff everywhere. How much spaceship blood can it leak before it goes and dies? Surely it is not long for the world. Ah, finally. And with that, that is essentially the last objective in this mission. And after the end of the mission, you get to select all your spacecraft and head on to the next one. You get a bit more story. I'm certainly not going to play through this whole thing as a series, I might do a Twitch thing, I don't know, um, because I just don't have the spare time to play this through as a high quality produced series. But yeah, it is available on GOG.com, I think it's $10 right now, there are actually having a sale on all the Homeworld stuff, so you can get Homeworld Remastered, which is Homeworld 1 and 2, you can also get Deserts of Karak, all the summer sales are on right now, all of these games are great real-time strategy games. Uh, Homeworld definitely is a little dated, but the story is great and it has fans all over the place. It's, it's something you have to play if you're a fan of spaceships and strategy. So I may, I may do a bit more on this, but until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.